Welcome to BaseballGuys.com. I'm your host, as always, Ray Flowers. Got some veterans in the news today looking to sign contracts. Got some veterans in the news today who have inked contracts. And then there's also one injury of note. So let's start with that injury, and that's at St. Louis. Uh, shortstop Brennan Roberts, who had a really strong finish to the season last year, flashed a good glove, a lot of speed on the bases, uh, was the presumptive starting shortstop for the club, injured his wrist, needed surgery on that on Tuesday. Now, it's not a major issue. It's not a major concern. Uh, most people believe that he'll be back in plenty of time to get a lot of work in spring training in order to be ready for opening day. But obviously, this isn't good news with pitchers and catchers reporting in less than 10 days. Keep an eye on the situation and Robert's health before deciding whether or not to take the plunge on him in the fantasy game. Now, this also brings up the possibility that Felipe Lopez, who had a great run with the Cardinals, uh, might be brought back as some insurance. Uh, Lopez is still looking for a club to sign with, still hasn't found the right fit at this point. Uh, both of those players, if given you know, 500 at-bats, could be viable options in mixed leagues with their ability on the base pass and their ability to score runs and produce a decent batting average. So it remains to be seen how the playing time situation works itself out, and until we know better, we don't know how to evaluate each of those players for the fantasy game. Two veterans that did sign. One is a pitcher. The other is a hitter. One signed a minor league deal. That's Todd Wellmeyer, formerly of the Cardinals. And the hitter is Mike Jacobs, who has gone to the Mets and now created a crowded position at first base. Both those players, both Wellmeyer and Jacobs, can be found in more depth if you go to rototimes.com or fanball.com. You can see a breaking down piece on those two players there. Uh, as far as Wellmeyer goes, he signed that minor league deal. Uh, there's some thought he might buy for the fifth starting position with the Giants. Madison Bumgarner is in the lead so far. Uh, Joe Martinez is also there. The Giants have kind of also said, hey, look, we want to give our in-house guys the opportunity before we turn to someone outside the organization. I think that's basically speak uh, to cover up the fact that Wellmeyer just isn't very good. Other than 2008, when he had a really strong season, had the ERA in the 3.7s, the whip around 1.25. Uh, he really hasn't been anything other than a completely average Major League pitcher. Even with that 2008 season, his overall career numbers are just not very good. Uh, bottom line for him, he fits best as a long reliever out of the pen. His ability to, to go on multiple days or pitch multiple innings is a useful thing for a Major League team, but he's nothing better than an average thriller. doesn't deserve any attention in the fantasy game. As far as Mike Jacobs goes, the guy can rip the ball. The problem with Jacobs is he can't hit left-handers at all. He was putrid against lefties last year. His career OPS against them is, is disturbing. It's under 600. So really, we're, we're in a situation with Jacobs where he can't hit left-handed pitching. He can only face righties where he has had a lot of success. Averaged about 26 home runs per 500 at-bats in his career against right-handers. So he can definitely bring a nice bat with the power against righties, even though he's deficient at getting on base, producing a batting average, etc. The question is, how much playing time does he get? The Mets had planned to go with a, a, a dual platoon of Fernando Tatis and Daniel Murphy. With the addition of Jacobs here on a $900,000 deal if he makes the club, uh, with about $1.1 million in incentives, taking the possibility of his deal just over the $2 million mark. Mets now have Jacobs, Tatis, and Murphy really to spend a little bit of time as a backup in the outfield and full-time at first base. We'll have to wait and see how it develops, but don't bet against Jacobs getting enough at-bats to push that 20 home run mark, though his other numbers, as mentioned, just won't be very good. Uh, Gary Sheffield, a former Met, um, who had a nice, well, had a decent half season last year for a player who's 41 years old, hitting the 270, he's hit 10 home runs and about 270 at bats, looking for an offer, looking for a club and a fit for 2010. According to, according to Sheffield, uh, he's got multiple offers on the table, he's weighing them, trying to decide where he wants to go, if he wants to continue his playing career at 41 years of age. He's reportedly lost about 15 pounds to get in peak physical condition. Uh, so we'll wait and see what happens with him. you got to think if he gets a chance to, to play on a semi-regular basis, he can still post decent numbers even at his advancing age. The guy has tremendous bat speed. Uh, Johnny Damon has been offered a deal, according to various reports, to play for the Atlanta Braves. It's a one-year deal, a report somewhere in the 4 to $6 million range. Some of the reports suggest that there's deferred money uh, that will be paid to him out over the course of you know, X amount of years. We'll have to wait and see from some clarification there. It does seem like the Braves are in a bidding war of sorts with the Tigers. The Tigers are said to be interested and might go for that second year that Damon really wants. And if the Tigers do that, you'd have to think they'd be the favorite to land him. Also, without the deferred money, if the Tigers just said, hey, here's the cash, Damon, take it, he probably will. Look for him to hopefully make up his mind before the end of the week so we can put this situation behind us. And finally, another veteran, Jermaine Dye. We've discussed him previously on Around the Horn here at BaseballGuys.com. 
He's officially come out and told teams, hey, look, I'm not just an outfielder anymore. I'm also an option at first base. Most of the defensive metrics show Dye to be a below average outfielder at this point. So his willingness to play first base is, is good news. It's something he should have been saying from the, the minute the season ended last year to increase his value anyway in 2010. Looks like he's come to the realization that unless he considers at least moving to first base, they're just not going to be a team out there willing, him, willing to give him anything near a full season at bats. Again, I'm Ray Flowers. It's BaseballGuys.com. Thanks for joining me, and I'll talk to you again later in the week.